16 pages in small print. Um, <laughs> and I timed it this morning. I wrote the thing two days ago, but I've been thinking about it all week. Um, and so in a way I started it earlier this week and uh, I typed it up last night and my wife printed it out. Her printer is misbehaving a little bit, but I can read it. Um, so I'm going to talk today. The title of my talk is The Things That Inspire Me That Have Inspired Me Recently. And I thought of three things. One thing that's always inspired me, and that's nature. That's why I sang the bird song. And the other thing, of course, since I've always kind of leaned towards things of a spiritual nature, another thing that inspires me more, particularly in the last month or two, um, is the whole thing of having a spiritual practice, a deep spiritual practice, and my yearning to get closer to God. That inspires me. And the third thing is people. I'm really becoming a people person and less of an introvert. And I love my old friends. Doesn't mean you're old. It just means you're friends that I've had for a while. And I love my new friends. And wait till you hear about them. <laughs> Okay, here goes. Oh, by the way, let me just see if I can get a couple of, since we can have a little group participation. Uh, just got a few people, if you could tell me in just one or two words, what, or tell the group, not just me. Um, what's something that inspires you? Let's just hear a few ideas. Anybody? Everybody what's on something? mute, go ahead. Huh? I'm just let let everybody unmute and uh, when something comes to you, go ahead and uh, answer uh, Norm's question. What inspires you? Let me see. Let me see. If anything. Well, your song obviously inspired me. This the opening song about the bird song that was uh, right. powerful for me. What inspires me is how creative people have been during this pandemic. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. What inspires me is the young people that are marching all over the world to bring consciousness for everyone's freedom. If, no, if one is not free, none of us are free. I love that. What inspires me are acts of kindness. Ah. Uh. Right there. Jane. I know you're inspired, so you don't have to tell us. <laughs> Everything inspires me, just, just this group. Just this in our in our in our Sunday group and, and all of you. You inspire me, keep me going. Yeah. I think uh, to add something that I said before, I'm watching hardly any TV now, and I'm doing a lot more reading and prayer, um, wow. consciousness, um, saving money on haircuts, even though the top is losing some ground, but uh, saving money on wash, not to give away my secrets. <laughs> uh, living in, in um, Two or three sets of uh, sweats. Um, just, uh, I don't know, a, kind of a more peaceful time, it, it, even amongst everything else going on for me. Well, let me get started and I'll talk in more depth of those three things nature, God, and people. And uh, 
God doesn't mind if I put, didn't put him first because God is everything and everybody. So I, God is always first. And then afterwards, if anybody else can think of a few short phrases of what's inspiring them or just a reaction to the whole thing, that would be wonderful. I think this should be no longer than 20 minutes, but who knows? What does inspire me? If someone were to ask me point blank, I'd say nature. Yes, it's true nature inspires me. It always has been my best friend. My family and I lived on 30 acres of land out in the country in Fairfax County when it was country, three tenths of a mile off Leesburg Pike, four miles west of Tyson's Corners, when that area was deep woods with a store or two and a bar looking out onto Route 7. Anybody been in that part of the county? My, um, nature living, nature living in the sounds and sights, touches and tastes of nature is soul food for me. Mom taught us the names of many of the plants and showed us ones we could nibble on. Grasses you could pull up the ends and bite, bite off with a salty, sour kind of taste. We could eat wild berries, cherries, sour grass, and have wild greens called lamb's quarters or pokeweed for supper. Nature meant squirrels, deer, rabbit, woodchucks, black snakes, foxes, and birds of all types. And all that was in Fairfax County, as well as all the animals we kept. Cats, a dog, geese that roamed throughout the land and through thunderstorms squawking and honking and having a great time. Chickens, turkeys. We had a chicken named Henny Penny and she never, we let her live her long life and you could pick her up and pet her and talk to her and she was so wonderful. We had ducks. Duck, dad brought a few of the ducks to school. We, they were teachers. Mom and dad were teachers in Sidwell Friends in Washington. And would you believe the ducks, because their wings had not been clipped, they flew from Sidwell, which is 20 miles away from our place, all the way back home. They found their way back home. We were amazed to discover they were sitting there a few days after they were, we took them to Sidwell so the kids could see them. Uh, trees of all types, especially what I really, really miss are the gorgeous white and red oaks that were on the top of the hill where we lived and our house was. Nature, always, always there, always comforting and inspiring. Our fruit trees, our nut trees, or our organic gardens, need I say more, but I probably will. Remembering how I felt, what I did, what I experienced is the real me, but nature still is me right now. Looking out our dining room window right here in this house where I am talking in Pikesville, Maryland, I see the cedar trees we replanted from the old place on top of the hill, as my brothers and I like to call it. The place no longer is, but the trees and other plants from that place are still alive and still around. And we've got a dogwood tree out there. Um, I see and hear birds, flowers, blossoms right here in Pikesville. I see sky and clouds as I do anywhere I go. I've traveled a lot and nature is everywhere and it is always my friend. Sitting on top, this is a memory I have, sitting on top of a tall hill outside Yakima, Washington. I was a fruit picker and they let me camp on that hill. Watching the blues and grays and purples change on the barren hills of central Washington state. I hear chord changes in my head. I'm listening in my head to that song, an instrumental song from Tommy. Remember that? The uh, wonderful rock opera, Tommy, was uh, written by The Who. So beautiful. I just hear it. It would go bring, and the mountains would change colors. It was so wonderful. I didn't need a stereo or anything. All, it was all in my head and all in nature. And I moved to West Virginia and uh, Elkins, West Virginia, which is in central West Virginia. 
and my favorite mountain was Bickle Knob, not too far from town. And I would drive up Bickle Knob, and I was uh, finishing college at the time, and I had my all my books and my research papers and my Olivetti portable typewriter. And I set a blanket out on the side of the mountain and there were wildflowers and birds singing and all that and I started typing my paper. Or I would have a sketchbook and I would sketch the wildflowers because I was an art major. And uh, all of a sudden a thunderstorm would come up. Boom, boom, and it would come up fast, and I would just gather everything in the blanket and throw it in the back of the car and jump in, and I had a wonderful day. So, so much, so wonderful. Nature grabs me, and, and I clutch it to my heart. How do I start? How do I stop? But I must, because recently I have fallen. My voice is breaking. In love with more things. And this wonderful lady I played in her church up in Princeton, New Jersey, Center for Spiritual Living, Princeton. Her name is Reverend Karen Kushner, and she's worth giving a listen to because um, they're doing the Zoom thing like everybody else. Anyway, Reverend Karen, my newest teacher from CSL's um, Center in Princeton, New Jersey, offered 40 days of 15 minute telephone conferences six days a week. And that became my discipline every day, praying and meditating and going deeper with Reverend Karen and all the invisible people, some whom I had seen a few weeks before and some probably in other places I had never seen. You never know who's listening to you on Zoom. Hi, strangers out there that, may, that I may not be looking at. Um, so we had things to study and meditate on and we were given many different practices to cleanse and clear ourselves. It was very intense. It was the right way to start and continue a day with. It was all about growing deeper and more committed to the creator and believing, knowing, and having faith in God. I chose one thing I wanted to grow in my life because she asked us to do that. My music, to have many, many others hear it and experience it to really have it grow. All of us in the call and groups chose something kind of like that or whatever. Every day, six days a week, I, we would call in, never seeing or hearing each other except in the very beginning when the prompt would ask you to state your name and press pound, which we would do. And you would hear different people say their name or just grunt, you know, because it was, pretty early in the morning and, and grunting was very appropriate. So anyway, it was wonderful to know that s people were there somehow supporting each other and it was powerful. And also this wonderful, lovely, knowledgeable, friendly uh, uh, minister with a doctorate, um, but very humble. You know, I just go on and on. She's a wonderful lady. And you know what she reminds me of? Just in um, the depth and humility of her being is Terry, Reverend Terry. I have a lot of respect for that man. And I do for Karen, too. There's a lot of good folks keeping up the sales and keeping us going through all this stuff. I had a powerful healing, folks. Listen to this. Early on, when I discovered coming home, landing in my driveway, I looked in the rear view mirror. I'm wearing the same glasses. And one of these lenses was out because one was green and one I could just see regular daylight. I said, well, wait a second. That's not how my glasses came. And I took my finger to touch it and then I poked my eyeball. I said, yeah, I'm missing something and I got better go back and retrace all my steps. So where did I go? The post office, walked over the parking lot, went inside, got back in the car, drove a few blocks, went into the M&T bank and looked around there, asked a few people, got back in the car, drove across the parking lot to the giant food store, 
looked around places where I was, got out, got back in the car and drove another block or so. And all of a sudden it hit me. You know something? Don't you believe in prayer, Norman? This is your opportunity. I mean, the worst that can happen is that nothing will happen. The best that can happen is that you're going to get a wonderful healing. And guess what? I, choke, choke, had a beautiful healing. I mean, I was saying, Norman, like, do it like you really mean it. I did. Like the whole world was watching. And I was naked in front of everyone, so to speak. That's how I felt. I said, man. I'm trying to prove my faith, my belief, the stuff I have studied for so gosh darn long, all these years. And now here it comes to a point to where I really want to have a healing. So the next stop was the library. And the library was just walking through quickly. But the top, um, our library in Pikesville, the bottom floor is the library. It's pretty big. And the top floor is the senior center, which this almost 73-year-old senior citizen, Norman, um, goes to the gym because it's very cheap rather than joining a gym and having to pay hundreds of dollars. I just pay $100 a year. So I went up there and I asked them if they had seen uh, a lens for a pair of glasses, not really thinking they would, but then remembering I had just prayed. So I walked out, I said, can I look around the lockers, you know, and the lockers were just across the way, and I looked all around and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I'm going to read what I wrote. Um, and I looked all over, and no luck, and I'm about to walk out, and I, I walked towards and started to pass the desk, where the several people were behind the desk. All four pairs of eyes were looking at me. One hand was extended with what was in the hand? The lens. Would you believe? I asked, who found it? And they told me she was leaving right now. The door was starting to close, and I just saw part of her foot go out the door. She was ready to walk down the long stairway. And uh, so I ran in there, and I caught her in mid-flight. And she was a short, heavily accented, we have a, we're in a very Jewish area, so it sounded kind of like an Eastern European Jewish accent. And smiling lady wearing a wonderful, fun outfit. And I said, I really feel like I should be hugging you, but I guess I can't. You know, uh, I don't want to scare you either. She was an angel. I thanked her so much. She calmly said the same thing had happened to her. She had lost the lens from her glasses. And she knew what it felt like when somebody returned it to her. So she was just doing the same thing someone had done for her. Talk about God's perfect timing. I had to visit all those different places and look everywhere and take that particular time. I thought I was wasting my time, but I wasn't because it took that much time of fooling around, and then I stopped to pray in the parking lot after leaving the giant. And then I went in there, found a parking space, and going upstairs, all that happened for me to have the privilege of meeting this wonderful, average, remarkable, little old lady from Pikesville. Um, who had just found the lens and get to tell her how grateful I was. It was a beautiful day. I immediately called up Reverend Karen, just as I've never done before. And I was just so excited. I was just, my mouth was running even faster than it is now. By the time the 40 day went practice was over, Reverend Karen announced she wanted to do another 40 days. She's been doing this 40-day Lent thing. She calls it Tesla Conte, and that's some kind of a book a guy had written, which is a wonderful book. It costs something like $60 and is over a thousand pages. Amazing. And this guy is the heaviest metaphysical guy you would ever want to hear, see, or know. Um, I'm not sure if he's alive or not, but I'm sure he's on some plane of existence. Anyway, um, 
she wanted to do another 40 days. Considering we were deep within the current health challenge, the thing whose name we will not name, and that's what Karen, she never mentioned any of those names we give it. That's just what she said, the thing whose name we will not name. Um, and she was set to take her dream trip to Italy. She had been taking Italian courses and was all set up to go. And then of course, you know, Italy was one of the places hit the hardest. And so she decided to use her spare time rather than feeling sorry for herself, which I'm sure she did a little bit. Um, she was a very honest person. And if something was scaring her, upsetting her, made her cry, she would tell us, you know, but then she would also pull herself together again. Anyway, so we continued in the next 40 days, which was called Countdown to Freedom. Um, and we would pray, meditate, practice various things. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of the lady who is from actually Alabama. I'll have to think of her and she is an incredible metaphysician. And uh, if I can think of it, fine. If I don't, I'll tell you some other time. Anyway, one Monday, Listen to this, folks. One Monday, she said, I want to tell you about Miracle Mondays. She said, I wish I had been practicing this still because I forgot about it. And then I thought about it the other day because I practiced it for a good eight months. And I had miracles just about every Monday. And uh, she said, well, here we are. And I am going to say that each and every one of us is going to have some form of powerful, unexpected miracle seven days from now on Monday. And guess who had one? B. Uh, actually, the uh, miracle started coming true a few days before that when I got a call from Maryland. Um, can you remember the name of the place where I work? Uh, food Bank, Maryland Food Bank. And it's like in a warehouse. And about 23 of us work together in two different production lines. There's a belt and we fill up boxes with canned goods, box goods and all that and lift heavy stuff all day long. By the way, my arms are sore, my hands are sore, even though I've been working there for a month. It is like, a daily marathon and it goes eight hours a day with two 10 minute breaks and a half hour lunch break. Well, anyway, I got a job and I've been praying for it and was thinking, oh, as soon as they find out that I was born June 20th, 1947, by the way, that's when my birthday is. Um, as soon as I, uh, I figured people would say, we don't want that old guy. He'll probably give the rest of us the virus or something. Whoops, I shouldn't have said virus. The thing that nobody wants to say. Okay. So anyway, interestingly, there's a church I go to to sing. It is in near Tacoma Park. In fact, it's called Tacoma Park Metaphysical Chapel. And they have these wonderful trained prayers who are called listeners. And every now and then, like, well, um, they will have, well, once a month on the second Sunday, um, you can pay 20 bucks for a two hour session to where a group of us will get visited by these listeners and they will ask, may I give you a message? And uh, of course you say yes. And they'll tell you what God is telling them. And one of them said, you will be having in either two days, two weeks, or two months, or something like that. Uh, I'm not sure which. You will have a new job. And it will not be anything in music. But it will be something that will help you very much. And I said, hmm, that's interesting. I wasn't really looking for another job unless it means... Uh, getting on one of those talent shows, which I tried a few months ago. Um, and, uh, but anyway, uh, I figured out that this prediction came true, but it wasn't two months. It was two seasons because I heard about the prediction in the fall and now here it is springtime. 
fall, winter, spring. Okay. And uh, so um, after applying at least a month before and getting an immediate email, and this is when I applied for the job that said, we're sorry, we don't need anyone now, but we'll keep you in mind. How many times have I heard that in my life? You know, when they'll say, we like you very much, but we just don't need you right now. Uh, we'll, let you, we'll keep you in our records. And I never hear from them again. Well, I did on Miracle Monday. See, God was just waiting for that time, right? Anyway, um, so that Monday morning, I walked in there with my jeans, my mask, <laughs> my t-shirt, and my sneakers ready to work. They gave me a pair of gloves and the magic began. Um, it has been one of the hardest and most wonderful jobs, not because of what I was doing. It is great helping to feed the hungry in Maryland, but because of who I am working with. I was ready to do rapid heavy lifting, box tearing, box making, pallet lifting, pallet building, shrink wrap removing, shrink wrap putting on for eight hours a day, building muscles, hurting my fingers, hands and arms, collecting bruises all over, feeling exhausted and feeling like I have never ever uh, earned a huge cup of coffee from the Royal Farms convenience store, that's a local Baltimore chain, uh, so much as I do at the end of the day. I get a big 20 ounce cup of coffee and I drink it down. And because I get up so early and man, I feel so good with that coffee. I mean, that's a reward in itself. Getting up early to shave, let the dogs out, pray, meditate, make and eat oatmeal, get going on a 14 mile drive to work in a warehouse with 23 other people and feed the hungry day after day. The, the reward is a paycheck and better yet, new self-discipline and Friends, I've got friends now. I know I have you as friends, but these are friends who are not like me at all, but they are like me. They're all 20 year olds and 30 year olds. They talk different, they like different music and all this stuff, but they still eat, smile, talk, swear, use the bathroom, uh, cut work, do all these, you know, they're regular folks doing the kind of crap that me and my buddies used to do and probably still do now, right folks? What well, we all do. Uh, we are a diverse group, one third Caucasian, one third black, one third Hispanic, two Asians, one of which is a best friend. Um, and he's the Asian guy. And uh, we both like cats, talking religion and philosophy and eating vegan food. And would you believe the cook makes special vegan food for me and my friend? And so we are just treated royally in that way. Guess what? I really love these folks, all 20 and 30 somethings and a few 40 somethings. Boy, were they surprised to be working cheek to jowl, keep your distance norm, no cheek to jowl, a genuine 22 and 11 month old senior citizen. That's me. Me, who still has a lot of shyness in me, makes a special effort to greet every day, several times a day, as many coworkers as the, I possibly can. The return is incredible. Respect, love, smiles through the mask. I love them, but I know they love me too. It's wonderful. It's just very bare, upfront, kind of loving stuff, you know? It's not all sweetie pie, but Maybe it is. Why do I love them? Because we are all family, really. We sweat together, joke, curse, tell stories, listen to music off their cell phones that I would never ever listen to, tease each other, really. I really think, I mean, I know that we are caring deeply for each other. Could be my imagination, but I don't think so. All of a sudden, I have a second purpose beyond doing music in my life. I still want to. I'm learning about people and they are learning about me. Now I'm gonna skip a paragraph, which my wife said, Norman, don't you dare tell them that. <laughs> okay, so I won't. So anyway, this is a great month. 
a guy named Larry, I'm changing his name, he, a heavy set young black man who was wearing a t-shirt that had his church affiliation on it. Um, he's had problems, he gets into arguments with people, but I think he really is a loving person and he tries really hard, he works hard, and uh, he has issues and some people have issues with him. But one day, he lost his wallet. And he, because he's very obese, but he still is very lively, he used his enormous girth. We have these boxes. They're like watermelon cardboard boxes. You ever seen them? You can put about 20 or 30 watermelons in them, and they'll have them outside a grocery store or produce market. And uh, we use the remainders of the boxes to put in all of our cardboard board scraps and we generate tons of cardboard and they sell it to make more money for their own food bank to buy more food for people. So anyway, he jumped in there backside in and he didn't mark what it was because he didn't know till later that he had lost his wallet. And a bunch of us, about eight or 10 of us went over with the boss's permission and overturned a whole bunch of boxes and we didn't find it. And he said, I am not going to leave this place until I get my wallet. And I said, you know something, buddy? I won't either. And two of us joined in. So there was now just four of us. And we tried a box and I said, you know something? Just something kept on bothering me. I said, I need to pray. I need to pray. And I need them to pray too. Four of us held hands. I'm not sure if we were wearing masks or not, but I'm still alive, okay? So I survived it. We held hands and we prayed to Jesus, God, and anything we could think of, and the angels. And would you believe the next box or two, we're about to turn it over. He said, I found it! What a happy day and what a happy, wonderful way to go home. And everybody in the whole building was happy. You know, we just want our brothers and sisters to be happy when they go home. And that's just kind of like the unity that I feel. You know, I know that there can be contention and I know there can be all kinds of stuff, but I just, I just want to focus on the good stuff. And so things go on. It's hard, hard work and sometimes pretty boring. It's often overwhelming, but we're all together. In religious science, which is the church I go to, which is pretty close to unity, there is a saying, treat, which means pray, and move your feet. Yes, I am treating or praying every day and I'm moving my feet, accepting what is and sometimes is not, knowing that God speaks and acts in so many different ways and through so many sources. A female friend of mine uh, heard me playing my backpacker guitar, which is a portable one, and I keep in the back of the car, and I was playing a couple of my songs out in the parking lot, sitting on a pile of something or other, and she loved it right away. She's only about 23, and uh, she got out her trusty iPhone and made a video of it and sent the video to all of her friends, as well as taking the um, address I gave her, normhoagland.com, which is where my album is. If any, I know a number of you have bought the album, but if you haven't, I want you to at least hear the music. Norm Hoagland, H-O-G-E-L-A-N-D.com. And uh, she heard it and she loves it and she's going to help me some more, you know, which I don't know what to do with all this stuff. I don't know how to work the social media. And so I've got all my young friends helping, you know, and that may be, you know, Karen had told me that something really powerful. She said, I can tell that you're going on to another bigger step, you know, when she heard about the job, even though it sounds nothing to do with music. So. Here are the three things that inspire me. Nature, definitely, always. Prayer, meditation, spiritual practice, definitely, just about always. And then people. I'm back to kindergarten again and learning basic things, kind of like, was it Rog, Roger Fulgham? Was that the name of the guy who said, uh, all you need to know is what you learned in kindergarten? Anybody remember that book? Good. I see a couple of heads um, shaking up and down. Um, so 
if you treat others with kindness and respect, you can expect and you will receive good. The world can be and is a friendly place. In all of this, nature, God, people, hard work, discipline, determination can get you through challenges. I have not gone through or experienced some of the challenges that many people have gone through these days. And I have not experienced by far some of the stuff that people have experienced in their lives, you know, as far as challenges are concerned or anything. But I sure am lucky and I sure am grateful and I sure am inspired by what I have received and what I've got. I haven't paid attention to the time. How are we doing? A little more than 20 minutes? Okay, so can anyone else think of or add to any remarks, any things you're thinking now? And we'll try to keep it short if a number of people want to speak or anything that inspires you, that is powerful, that you probably, well, yeah, what do you think? Um, like I'm just really curious about what some of my brothers and sisters over here, whom I am looking at, um, what's going on with you all? I'll, uh, I'll add something to your talk. Thank you very much for it. Um, last week we listened to, to Bill and he talked about um, thy will be done and how many things happened in his life where he just, you know, was presented with something really life-threatening and he just closed his eyes and prayed and and your statement your your story about the lens is just a proof and sometimes god gives us these little tests he says all right test me you know you want to pray you don't have to pray for somebody that's on their you know their, their deathbed or whatever um you can pray for that too but sometimes the little things in life strengthen your your beliefs. And that little lens, I always say divine order. And I had, um, I didn't, uh, last week was kind of interesting. Uh, I was in the, didn't tell anybody, I was in the hospital with multiple uh, blood clots on my lungs and throughout my, my legs. And I almost, I almost didn't make this uh, meeting this morning. And, um, and uh, Frank would know because I'm on blood thinners but I stopped the blood thinners because I was on aspirin, Frank, right? And I was supposed to go for blood work to see about, you know, anticoagulation issues and blood profiles. And I kept putting it off because I didn't want to go to the hospital. Duh. <laughs> so I ended up not being able to breathe, going to the ER and um, they said, you're going to be admitted. And thank God I didn't get into the COVID lab or floor because I, was tested uh, tested negative. So I'm glad I'm here today and I just gave it up to God. I said, all right, you wanna put me in and you know, put me on the bed, whatever your will is, Lord. And so uh, I think we all have a lot to be thankful for, but your story is, is really beautiful about nature. So I wanna thank you for that. And somebody else would like to share. Go for it. Unmute. I feel a share coming on. Is that you, Frank? Unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, I was going to share some nature here. Okay. I don't know if it's too bright out here for you guys to see, but this is my deck and Jan's got it all. covered with flowers in color. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh yeah, we can see it. Okay, these, uh, this plant right in front here, just uh, from last night, they were buds yesterday, now they're, they're full bloom. And the weather is fine out here. <laughs> you know, it's beautiful out today. Thank you for the panic uh, panorama. Someone else want to share? No, yep, I will. <clears throat> First of all, I'm very, very glad of your news, Neil. I'm sorry what you went through. Um, but the other thing from Norm's talk, from what I have found, 
because I'm very much of an angel person, that we only have to ask. The powers, the angels, God is always willing, but we have to ask. And as soon as you asked for help with your lens, look what happened. And it's happened to me so many times that, you know, I, I'm trying to do it on my own, using my brain, using just my will. And then I have to stop and say, no, I need help here. And as soon as I say, I need help, it comes. So it was a wonderful talk and I'm so happy with what's happened. A lot of good news here today. Neil's okay. Um, everyone's you know, he's got a new job. Norm's got a new job. So I hope everybody's doing okay. Leon, we haven't heard from you at all. Your turn. Well, I don't have anything quite as dramatic as Neil and uh, certainly not as good as, uh, you know, giving Lynn a hard time and still getting a hug, but um, I have been speaking with some people I haven't spoken with for a while on the phone and uh, they're very interesting, very intelligent, probably why they didn't call me and uh, I'm doing pretty darn well. Oh. And before I, uh, uh, I've got uh, next week's talk, I believe. Right. And the, uh, uh, the title of the talk is Secrets, and I'm trying to tailor it so that I can skirt the anti-slander laws uh, and uh, do a, you know, still have a little fun with it. So, <laughs> thanks. Uh, I can say something. 17 times, I know. <laughs> um, uh, Patty, just want to add something too. We have uh, a birthday today. It's Matt's birthday. Matt, yay. Happy birthday, Matt. Happy birthday, Matt. Beautiful. Celebrate. <laughs> Patty, you were going to say something? Yes. I just want to speak to Jane in front of everybody. We met Jane, how many years ago did you come to our house at Christmas time? Oh my, it must have been I'm what, four or five years ago. Yeah, and, and were you, you were in our group at that time and you had just joined? Yes, I had just joined and you found out I did not have a place to go for Christmas and you invited me and it was a wonderful, wonderful day. So she got to see all the chaos and wonder and joy that we have in our family because there's always about 32 immediate family members. <laughs> and, and, and she got to be a part of all that. And we were so grateful. But what I want to say is watching you over these last few years too, because at that time you were timid and in grief and you were shy and you were uncertain you it was like your feet are just like not and i know what that feels like when your feet are not quite on the ground and to see you today as the leader uh, who you are and your 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 spirit of of uh, giving and sharing and the star that you are. I just, it's just marvelous. And I just, you know, it's like watching that uh, from where I met you. And I'm sure that you were like that at one time, but when we met you, uh, life, had, uh, life had made a different turn for you. So uh, I just want to say that. We love you. Thank you. And hope you'll visit us again. Oh, thank you. And, and Unity Church was one of the factors that helped me, that made me grow. Wow. And Bob was the one who gave me the name of um, Marty Giese. And she helped me incredibly. Um, so and she is not with us anymore. She is now helping us from above. But it was, it's been quite a journey the last few years, and you all have been a big part of it. So thank you. 
Take it to the bank, dear. You are jewel. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea when I married Patty that I was marrying a family. <laughs> and I had no idea there were going to be so many <laughs> parties. Um, it's been a joy of my life. And I have a story about 